Ranching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Illinois' move to legalize recreational marijuana for adult use won't just create a new market. It will also create and carve out specific new opportunities in places where the black market made victims of black people for decades. Wealthy white men would get rich and black men would get arrested. The war on cannabis has destroyed families, filled prisons with nonviolent offenders, and disproportionately disrupted black and brown communities. And those dads, those moms, those dealers and users alike will not only get a clean slate under this new law, but a significant leg up in a new and growing industry. What we are doing here is about reparations. This is about this is about repairing harm. Harm that's been done to communities for the last 40 years as a part of the failed war on drugs. Reparations, you heard that politically popular word now. It's a matter of much national debate. President Trump even weighing in saying he did not think reparations would happen on a national scale. Perhaps it might in some form here in Illinois, although under a different project. Joining us now is Jim Bray with the Illinois Justice Project. Uh, it's good to have you with us. Thank you, Mark. You and your group were a part of some of these discussions about a specific slice of this really big, complicated marijuana bill. This is the uh, R3 program. There, there's three R's. It's restore, reinvest, and renew program. Correct. Um, could you throw that fourth R in there, reparations? Well, you could. It's actually uh, uh, an acronym that intends to direct money to communities in the state that have been damaged, we believe, in part, by the war on drugs. The war on drugs uh, increased sentences and uh, put a lot of black youth and black men into prison for long periods of time. It did not help them get off of drugs. It did not win any war on drugs. It sent them back into the communities where they sometimes couldn't find a job, became uh, uh, criminals again, and went back into prison. So it's really taken a lot of people away from these communities and uh, in, the, in the process damaged and actually made those communities less safe. And this 3R program or R3 program intends to help them get back on their feet and become a more safe and stable uh, community. A liberal-minded blog, Think Progress, uh, really hailed this Illinois uh, marijuana policy for this specific thing. I'm going to read an excerpt of that article to you. Uh, Illinois lawmakers have cut a new trail, it says, on policy questions that have bedeviled legislation-minded legislators elsewhere. Low-income communities of color that have borne disproportionate shares of the social and fiscal costs of the war on drugs will have a dramatic leg up in the race for dispensary and grow shop licenses. Later in the article, it says those same communities will be first in line for direct investment from new tax revenues. Uh, cannabis will generate for Illinois a full 25% of that new money is required to be set aside for the new restore, reinvest, and renew program. That's that R3 program we talked about. A couple questions here. How So 25% of all tax revenue that comes out of this is going to go into that reinvest? First, the tax revenue will go pay for the administration of the program of the cannabis legalization program and it will pay for the expungement portion of the uh, uh, bill which allows people that have uh, a lot of people that have marijuana uh, convictions on their record or arrests erase those and that's going to be a little bit expensive for uh, the state to do but the money will be there through the cannabis sure. fund. but, but the reinvestment 25 percent for this our uh, three program so, so after that money's been scraped off the top it's yep. the 25 percent of what's left over correct uh, so how does that work in the law? Because we heard Senator Staines make a point uh, late in the negotiations that y you've already mentioned the communities of color that were impacted, but you can't really put a racial component in legislation. Right. So there's a different way of scoring this to determine uh, who is eligible and, and high crime areas. How, how, did, how does the law uh, pave those avenues to make sure that the dollars flow back to those specific areas? That's correct, and we also wanted to be sure the money went to areas that needed it and not uh, areas that were represented by legislators that have clout. Uh, it goes to, the law specifically tells the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority, a state agency of uh, experts and technicians, to uh, look at uh, four or five factors, including uh, where are the areas of the state that have a high number of people going to prison and returning from prison, like I mentioned. Uh, where are the areas of the state that have high uh, uh, numbers of children in poverty? 
uh, the areas that have uh, high uh, unemployment rates and a, a few other matters like that. <clears throat> Most likely it will end up being a lot of minority communities where you see the uh, high rates of violence. And, and the high rates of violence is another uh, important factor that will be analyzed. And the uh, experts at the Criminal Justice Information Authority will make all this information public and will give it to a, uh, a statewide board, a new statewide board, <clears throat> chaired by the Illinois Lieutenant Governor. So sometimes when you go to buy a product um, at, at some business, they'll say a portion of the proceeds go to this charity. In, in a way, this is like if you walk into a marijuana dispensary, a legal one, starting after January 2020, you could say 25% of the tax proceeds of this product goes to these right. high crime, low income areas. Is right. that a correct way of saying it? That's Once they get the money, reason. how can they spend it? Uh, the local areas that need this money will develop plans that they will run by the uh, new statewide board chaired by the lieutenant governor and, and including uh, other state agency directors, a few legislators and some community organizations. <clears throat> they will uh, learn, to try to determine themselves what the money should be used for in their areas. Uh, and, and the state isn't dictating to them what they should spend it on. We want the local people to develop their own plans. The state will assist them and then the state will review those plans the Criminal Justice Information Authority will eventually approve a final plan for each community. But it's for uh, community development, business development, job it, growth? It, what, it, what are it, the, it, anything they all, want? All the above. Uh, it could include uh, uh, mentoring for uh, guys that come out of prison back into the uh, community to, to do more with them, to get mental health services to them that they're not able to find right now, to help them find jobs, to help them learn how to apply for jobs and fill out a resume, those kinds of things. And is this in the form of grants or how it's is it? In the form of grants, right. Interesting. Thanks for your attention to the uh, new program. All right, we're back in just a moment with our Reporters Roundtable. We take a closer look at how people can see their records wiped clean under this expungement. Also, the Supreme Court in Washington handing down a very uh, relevant and impactful decision in gerrymandering how we draw our political maps with 2020 just around the corner.